Like if your roster is all white, yes, you should probably bring in some people of color. If your roster is all cis, yes, you should definitely bring in some trans people. Amplify each other. Like, <laughs> um, it really was just a reaction to our environment and community in Bushwick. Like, there were a bunch of like women artists playing techno, um, but not really being put on or booked. So, it kind of was just like, let's just do a party and celebrate these artists. We felt like having kind of like a business was an agency business was the way that we could like push forward mm. change effectively. That's what we're focusing on. Just actually giving people a platform consistently and jobs. It's always, it's like crazy, it's like no matter how much of like a prominent feminist stand that you have or how many accolades you have, you're still fighting the same thing. I still deal with the same crap all the time. I mean, who plays, who are the decision makers, who are the bookers, who owns the spaces. I think there's so much to challenge. The same way men speak to me in emails, it's the same. Like, it doesn't, hasn't really shifted, like, dramatically, like, in that sense, do you know what I mean? I'm also, you know, personally at a place where I don't stand for that kind of stuff. So, if I even get ticked off a little bit, then I will let people know, basically. <laughs> I mean, it's just amazing to see how when you give people an opportunity to do their thing and like a small amount of encouragement, it can just like, so much can blossom from that. That's a huge real life example that I've seen happen so many times and it's like really proving to me that that works, that that formula gets somewhere. I mean, we want to be in a space where we're not like remarkable. We want that to be the norm that you have a diverse agency of artists and like, that should just be standard practice. That that isn't uh, lineups and agencies that are just like white cis dudes. That's really it.